But I want to speak to you this morning on the subject of, we've been talking about our identity in Christ. We're going to continue that this morning. And we're going to be speaking on identify with life. Identify with life. Our scripture is from Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 7. Romans chapter 8, verses... Now, Dan's not going to be putting the scriptures up today because I want this to run the entire time that we are speaking. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 7. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Now, before we go any further, I do want to give a shout out this morning um, to my second cousin that is in North Carolina. Chantel Hemingway uh, has gotten involved with the uh, Arms of Grace Pregnancy Resource Center that is just starting up in Burlington, North Carolina. Now, the reason I like this, I, I love this, is because... Chantel is younger. Chantel, I don't know how old you are, but I know you're younger than I am. Uh, so anytime you can get young people, young families involved in something like this, that is fantastic. Now, and I believe she is my second cousin. Her mom, Jackie, is my first cousin, which would make her my second cousin. But I know she's family anyway. I mean, she's a beautiful young lady. That runs in my family. Yeah. And uh, she's really smart. That runs in my family. And she is crazy. That definitely runs in my family. Okay. So, but, um, you know, we, we want to give a shout out to her and the work that she's doing, volunteering there and helping that get off of the ground. That is a, such an important, important ministry. Now, when we consider the human body, let's just take a little trip down what makes up the human body. It is composed of... 10,000 trillion trillion atoms. That is more than the stars in the universe. Each human body contains between 10 and 100 trillion cells. And each cell is made up of trillions of atoms. In a lifetime, get this, in a lifetime, the human heart beats over 2 billion times. 2 billion times. And pumps 60 million gallons of blood through... 60,000 miles of blood vessels. Woo, wow. Even the smallest blood vessels, the tiny capillaries, have some 70,000 square feet of surface, surface area. That is, that is phenomenal. We breathe 600 million times over the average lifespan with each breath processing over a billion trillion air molecules which pass over... 300 million alveoli, uh, Howard, you might be able to tell me how to say that, the cells in your lungs that provide a surface area equivalent to half of a tennis court. So <laughs> that, that's phenomenal. The, get this, the retina of the eye contains over 100 million rods and cones that take continuous pictures. One third of a second, the retina solves the equivalent of nonlinear differential equations that would take a supercomputer 100 years to solve. My, we're smart. God made us smart. I mean, it's amazing. The human ear has a million moving parts that can vibrate 20,000 times per second, hear sounds over a range of intensity that varies by a trillion, and can distinguish among 2,000 different pitches. Mm. The human nose can distinguish 10,000 different smells. Our three-pound brain is the most complex arrangement of matter ever discovered in the universe. It contains 10 billion neurons and has 100 trillion neurological interconnections that, if stretched out, would extend 100,000 miles. Some people today would have trouble stretching their brains a mile. I think a lot, a lot of the mile stretches is simply common sense, which we're missing a lot of common sense today. But it's just amazing 
the brains that we have. Get this, billions of skin cells are replaced every day and the entire surface of the skin is replaced every two weeks. Wow, amazing. We have five million hair follicles. David, maybe we shouldn't talk about that. Yeah, which over a lifetime grow over two million feet of hair. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're a little bit short, aren't we? Yeah. So what's, what, what do we get out of all of this? The, the biology of the human being is obviously stunning. We were created that way by our creator, God. As it turns out, we're, we're not just a scientific experiment that was done on a rainy day to just pass the time. That's not what we are. We were created in the very image of God. I mean, you look at us and you should see an image of God. And when you look at, at a, a baby, when you look at a human, you, you should just be in awe about what God has done and what God has created. In, on September 19, 2015, an activist by the name of Lindy West had two uh, women with her, Amelia Bonow and Kimberly Morrison. They started a Twitter hashtag called hashtag shout your abortion. And it was in the response to the news that the, the House had cut the funding for Planned Parenthood. So they wanted to shout out their support uh, for abortion and shout out the support for their abortion that they had had. Let me read just a few of the tweets that went out. One lady said, my abortion was in 2010 and the career that I have built since then fulfills me and makes me better able to care for kids I have now. I would really struggle knowing that the career I had was built on the blood of my firstborn. One lady said, honestly, my abortion at 20 was the first responsible, non-self-destructive, grown choice I ever made. Mm. One lady said, I've had two abortions. I don't have to justify or explain them to anybody. My life is more valuable than a potential life. One lady said, I haven't needed an abortion yet, but I don't know of any regrettable ones. If you need a ride to yours, let me know. Wow. Now, these kind of tweets were not the only tweets that people started sending in. There were tweets that were sent in by people who were pro-life. One tweet was, destroying sea turtle eggs, felony. Destroying eagle eggs, felony. Destroying a human life, you get high fives on Twitter. Wow, how backwards are we? One lady said, I kept my baby because her divine right to live trumped my selfish desire not to take responsibility for my choices. Bingo, absolutely. Perhaps one of the most balanced responses came from one who said, regardless of your stance on abortion, why can't we all agree it's not something to brag about? Why is hashtag shout your abortion a thing? So it seems that in our world today that we're not only sinners, but we're proud to be sinners. And while we should be mourning over our sin, instead in our country today and around the world, we just revel in it. I mean, we just praise it. The idea seems to be boasting that is magical. It can turn the most shameful atrocities <laughs> into good deeds worthy of praise. But, you know, that is so disgraceful. It goes right back to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Woe unto them that call bitter sweet and sweet for bitter. That's exactly the society that we're living in today. So all the boasting in the world cannot magically transform sin 
into sanctity. And it cannot, I don't care how much you boast about it. You can put it on a flag and wave it high, but it will never turn murder into morality. You cannot do that. That is impossible. So how should we, how do we identify with life? See, that's one of the crises that we have going on today is an identity crisis. Everybody wants to know. In many places, they want to, how do you identify? Why do we even have to ask that question today? Well, today, you can identify in any way you want to. Male, female, bisexual, pansexual, all the different 57 ways that you can identify today. And it can change from day to day. You can identify as, as pro-life or you can identify as pro-death. You can identify as a Democrat, Republican, Independent, nothing at all. You can identify any way you want to, but we have a crisis today. But, and even in the church, that's the sad thing is that we have a crisis today of how we identify. And at some point, at some point, it's going to be asked, well, who was he? Who was she? And I hope that at the end of my life and the end of your life, that first and foremost, you will be identified as a Christian. You will be identified as someone who loves the Lord, who knew the Word, who, that, that lived a life that was holy and acceptable and perfect the will of God. I hope that that's the, one of the ways, the most important way, that we would be identified. Now, above and beyond that, oh, he was a good father. He was a great husband. Oh, he was a hard worker. Those things are great. But we must first of all be identified as a Christian, as a lover of Jesus Christ, as someone who accepted Him as our personal Lord and Savior. So how do we identify today? We are identified by what we say. Do you understand that? We are identified by what we say. Now, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. What does it say? Everybody knows this scripture. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, I want to take a minute and I want to go through the definition of this word death because this will actually blow you away. Uh, death. It means death by violence. Death by violence. It means to have one executed. To die or to die as a penalty. To be put to death. Get this. To die prematurely. But there's a reason for this premature death. In the definition of this word, to die prematurely by, by neglect of wise moral conduct. Did you get that? If we neglect wise moral conduct, it will bring a premature death. And that is exactly what happens with every abortion that is performed. The neglect of wise moral conduct. Now, that word life there, death and life, or in the power of the tongue, it, 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 it's, it's really interesting. Uh, the first thing that it brings up is green as a vegetation. We, green, I mean, that shows life. It means flowing as a fresh water. It means lively or active as a man. It means reviving of the springtime, but it also means revival and renewal. Then it means to, to live, to have life, to remain alive, to sustain life, to live forever, to be quickened, to be alive, to be restored to life or health. Now it goes on to mean to quicken from sickness, from discouragement, from faintness, and from death. So you can see the difference between the definitions of death and the definitions of life. And that's the choice that God has given us, and that choice is in our tongue. <laughs> So how will people how will people know us? They will know us by what we say. It, we tell who we are every time we begin to speak. You spend enough time with someone, you'll find out where they stand on everything. Because sooner or later the subjects are going to come around. So how would we how will we identify when this subject comes up? How will we identify, first and foremost, as a Christian? How will we identify when it comes to how we identify according to the Word of God? How will we identify? Someone talks to you, how will you identify when it comes to the subject of life, when it comes to the subject of abortion? How will you identify? Now, believe it or not, 
At some point, every one of us has had the discussion. It comes up, and it's going to continue to come up. And I would hope and pray that every one of us would identify with life. Now, number two, we also identify by what we think. Now, what we think, obviously, a lot of times comes out between our lips. What we think that comes out between our lips sometimes should not come out. <laughs> because we have a lot of people who speak before they think. And, and you can't reach out there and grab those, oh, let me have those back. Oh, no, it's, it's there. It's hit the air. It's done. But we can be identified by what we think. Now, the scripture we read this morning, Romans 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, I want to break down this definition of the word carnally. And this is quite a long definition. So, Stay with me, stay with me here, because this says a lot. This tells us so much. Carnally means the flesh. It means just mere human nature. The earthly nature of man apart from the divine influence. Okay, apart from the divine influence. And therefore prone to sin and opposed to God. Carnality is opposed to God. Now, it comes from a word that means to sweep or to clean by sweeping. Now, what people like to do in many situations in their life, not just abortion, but anything that has happened that you don't want people to know, that you don't want to have, we just, what's the old adage? Just sweep it under the rug, right? Just sweep it under the rug. So people will not see what has happened or what's going on. So it, you kind of get that idea from this definition. So it means to sweep or to clean by sweeping. Now, it comes from another definition, a, a word that means to draw or to drag of one before the judge to prison or to punishment. Listen, there are many things that we do in our life that are absolutely sinful. They're absolutely uh, against God, opposed to God. They are carnal things that will drag you before the judge and put you in prison. That's what sin does. Sin puts you in prison. We all know that. Why? Because we all been there. We know what it's like to look on the other from the other side of the bars. But that's the definition of this word carnality. Carna uh, the the uh, for to be carnally minded is dead. Now it goes on from there. Again, stay with me. Bear with me here. It means to take for oneself, to prefer, to choose, or to choose by vote. Now you're getting into the choice of that people take of whether to have an abortion or not have an abortion. Comes from a root word that means to bear away what has been raised or to carry off. Now I'm going to go through each one of these so you can get the idea of what's going on here. It means to move from its place. What does an abortion do? It moves a baby from its rightful place. It means to take off or to take away what is attached to anything. What does an abortion do? It takes away that baby that is attached to the womb of the mother. It means to remove. That one is self-explanatory. It means to carry off or carry away. It means to appropriate what is taken. Now, let me, huh, this is so sad. This is so evil. But get this part of this. Now, look, this is the definition of a Greek word from over 2,000 years ago. It means to appropriate what was taken. Do you know what's been going on with the aborted babies? The tissue, the body parts, the organs have been appropriated to whoever wants to do experiments. They're taking it. This definition of this word carnality spoke to that over 2,000 years ago to appropriate what was taken. That's going on in this country. And there's a young man who actually exposed that that is being sued and has been in a lawsuit for several years now when he exposed that baby body parts were being purchased and sold throughout the country. And the attorney general who brought the lawsuit 
Kamala Harris. Go look it up. Still going on today. Has cost tens of millions of dollars for him to defend himself because he simply exposed what was illegal in this country. It means to take by force. It means to take and apply to any use. Every bit of this, every bit of this definition of carnality points to what we're talking about this morning. It means to take from among the living, to take from among the living, either by a natural death or by violence. <laughs> it means to cause to cease. It means the death of the body. Now, that, that is so plain that what we're talking about when it comes to abortion is carnality. It is opposed to God. For to be carnally minded is death. That means that separation, whether natural or violent, of the soul and the body by which the life on earth is ended. That's what happens in abortion. Now, this word spiritually, to be spiritually minded, the definition is the third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit, co-equal, <coughs> co-eternal with the Father and the Son, sometimes referred to in a way which emphasizes his personality and character, the Holy Spirit. Every baby that is born not only has a different fingerprint, has a different personality, has different characteristics, has different traits, has a call and purpose on that baby's life. How do we know that? God said, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Everything about you was written in the book. <laughs> It sometimes refers to a way which emphasizes his work and power of the spirit of truth. It is never referred to as a depersonalized force. In other words, he's, the spirit is never referred to as a fetus or tissue or just a glob of material. Never. But that's the way we make ourselves feel better when we're referring to the baby in the womb. Life means absolute fullness of life. Essential, ethical, which belongs to God. Genuine life. Vigorous life. And peace. Peace means the exemption from the rage and havoc of war. People are involved in a just an awesome war that is going on today. Every one of these numbers that are going on up here is a war that is going on in a person's life. But God brings peace. So not only do we identify with what we say, we identify with what we think. Number three, I hope that we will be identified by who we know. Now, we know how important it is sometimes to some people more... More so to some people than others. But you've got some people that you can meet that before the conversation's over, they will let you know who they know. Oh, I know the governor personally. Oh, yeah, I've met, I met the president. Oh, I know, I know the senator. Yeah, you, know, I, I, you know, I know a school board member. You know? I, I, it's all, they're, they're, part of their personality is based on who they know. It's, it's who's in my circle. And who I've talked to. Oh, I've got his number. Yeah, I've got his number right here in my phone. I could call him anytime I want to. Right? But some people, they want you to know who they know. But we, when we identify with Christ, our identity should be in who we know. And first and foremost, it better be Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. When someone walks away from a conversation from you, they should know, oh, that is a man of God. That's a woman of God. We all know, we grew up in those uh, old-fashioned churches. When something went wrong, you had one or two people that you would call. Most of the time, it was the ladies of the church. And they say, you better call sister so-and-so. She knows how to get in touch with God. He knows how to go before the throne of grace. Yeah. So how will we be known? Our identity when everything is said and done, how will we identify with who we know? It's not going to matter 
if you know the governor. It won't matter if you know the president. It won't matter if you know everybody in the Senate or everybody on the school board or even the pastor of the church. You better know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Because if you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, then you can identify with what you say and you will identify with Him in what you think. And I can tell you right now, you as a Christian will not stand for abortion. Now I can stand here this, this morning before you and tell you that as far as I know, I've never voted for anyone who stood for abortion. And I will not. I will not vote for anyone who wants to continue the curse that has been upon this land for all these years. Won't do it. That has to be, if anybody wants to know, hey, who's your pastor? Well, I can tell you one thing. He's not going to vote for anybody who stands for abortion. Not going to happen. 2 Peter 1, 2, 3, and 4. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, when I see that, I, I want that knowledge of God. I want to have that knowledge of Jesus Christ. What does it say here? According to His divine power, in verse 3, has He given unto the, all things that pertain unto life and righteousness, not death and unrighteousness, through the knowledge of Him that called us to His glory and virtue. That we might be, in verse 4, partakers of His divine nature. And I can tell you this morning that part of God's divine nature is the sanctity of human life. There's no question about it. And that means I follow in His footsteps and I follow in His Word and I act accordingly, I speak accordingly, I think accordingly, and I would hope that people know me accordingly. That we walk according to the Word of God and His divine nature. Now any of you that are listening this morning, I want you to know, look, if you've had an abortion, there is forgiveness, there is healing, there is restoration. I, I mean, God wants to bless you. God wants to heal you and restore you. And He will do that. If you need someone to talk to, just, you know, uh, some way get in touch with us, either on Facebook, um, we'll reach out to you. There's a program that they have at Options Now that will, uh, it's called Embrace Freedom, that will take you through the healing process of this. There's so many out there that are struggling with that decision that they made. But it's not hopeless. Everybody needs to understand that. It is not hopeless. Jesus died for all of our sins. Jesus died to give us hope. He is our hope. So in the time that we have spent together this morning, from the time that Carol began to to speak and um, who has a calculator on their phone? I think I took mine off. We started, we might be able to do it. I got it. What, what we started with just do 804,290 and now it is 807,860. In the time that 3, we... 3,558. 3,558 abortions have been performed in the time that we were speaking this morning. 3,558 lives are taken out of this world and are now in glory. Waiting 
on their mama and daddy. And we pray that the mama and dad one day will be there with them. That's how important this issue is. For all these years, it has brought a curse on this nation. And all these years, people think that churches just need to stay away from these things. You're going to upset some people. A lot of people need to be upset. A lot of people in the churches need to be upset. They need to get right. Pastors need to speak on these things. Not avoid and not shun all of these political hot potatoes that people say are out there. This is one of those political hot potatoes that we have to take. We have to let people know exactly what's going on. And pray that God this year will reverse Roe versus Wade. And we still got more battles to fight. Mm -hmm. There's still more battles to fight. Don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop fighting. But I pray this morning when you leave here, you will be identified with life, not death. Be identified with life. We stand for life. Amen? Amen. Let's stand this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. We thank you, Lord. Uh, you have prepared the way for this curse to be reversed on this nation. You have prepared the way. Intercessors have prayed for decades. Now, Lord, we want to see this come to pass, that this evil law is overturned. Lord, we thank you, Father, for the churches, for the people that are speaking out against abortion. We thank you, Lord, that uh, for the sanctity of human life that you have given us. We thank you that we are created and made in your image. And Lord, we thank you that there is hope, there is healing and restoration for anyone who has gone through the abortion process in their life. We give you praise for that. Yes. And we speak to them to rise up and be healed in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. We will see you next Sunday.